So, yeah, I, I know I've been slacking and I owe you multiple videos. So I'm going to combine the Vortex months three and four together because I'm super late on three. But in my defense, I've had this as a background for the past two weeks. So, yeah, <laughs> I've been in Hawaii and it has been absolutely amazing. So, so I came to teach at Quilt Passions here in Kona um, on the big island. And if you missed this one, don't worry, we're already planning another couple. <laughs> we're planning something for January and then we're planning something for next July as well. So we have big plans and I'll be back. Next month, uh, August, I'll be in Pittsburgh at the um, Fiber Arts Festival. I have five classes there including a knitting, two crochet, and a quilting class and then a advanced sewing class. So registration is still open for those. In September, I'll be back at the Sew Magical Expo in Florida. And um, I have two classes there. One is sold out. And then I will also be doing like a make and donate at the booth, which I'm very excited about because it's the sail away quilt, which we normally do as a modern quilting bee where everyone gets a block and then one person in the class gets to win all of the blocks. Except in this case, everyone who comes to the booth and wants to work on a block, they'll work on a block, they'll learn the technique, and then we'll donate the quilt in the end. So um, that's in September in Kissimmee in Florida. And I'll put all these links in the description. And then October and November, we're working on some um, more private shop events, classes at shops in Montana and Colorado, respectively, for October and November. And then January I will be at Road to California and I have five classes there. Uh, one of them is sold out, the others are getting there quickly. So if you haven't signed up yet, go now and do that because that sells out pretty quickly from what I hear. So um, <laughs> now we'll get into Vortex and like I said, I'm gonna combine months three and four. I wanted to talk a little bit this month about two things, mainly that the Kona cottons that are used in the legit kits are um, OTEX certified. So there's no harmful chemicals used in their processing, in the dyeing, in the manufacturing, which means you can put your scraps in your compost if you want to. It'll take a little longer to, to break down, but I mean, if you're just gonna throw things out there anyway, so like the way I compost, I just throw everything and I don't really worry about how long it takes because it could be out there for years before I actually get to use it. So I just throw it out there, the paper goes out there too and um, I, it just can break down in its own time. You might have a recycling system in your community or in your town that is a more commercial composting system and you can absolutely put them in that. So check your local regulations and just see if that's something that's accepted. But um, that's one of the reasons I like this Kona cotton so much is because there's no harmful chemicals used in its processing. The other thing I wanna point out is that um, I do show how to nest seams this um, this month. It doesn't come up a lot in foundation paper piecing, but when it does, it's handy to know. So I show you how to do that when you're joining your blocks. So months one, two, three, four will be done after this. And that means we have a nice little mini quilt uh, along the way. So we're making good progress. This is still a super easy quilt because we really don't get into much detail um, until really, I think month nine. Like at this point, it's still very easy, very simple. The blocks still are only made of a couple pieces in most cases. So. I think if you've got it this far, you've got it down pat and then it won't get any harder until month nine. And even when it gets harder, it's still not that hard. It's just like one more section uh, in, a, in a block. So um, of course, feel free to message me with any questions, any problems, uh, anything like that. But this is the simplest pattern that Legit Kits has released.
as I'm sewing these scenes together, it's a really good example to show you how sometimes you just have to listen to what the fabric wants to do. So I usually press all of my seams open, and then when I get to this intersection in the middle of these blocks, it's really evident that they do not want to be pressed open, especially because they're kind of opposite each other. So D2 has no seams that lead up to that intersection, and D1 has one seam that does. And then the opposite is true on C. C2 has one seam that leads into that center intersection, and C1 has no seams. So really, they kind of want to be pressed away from that extra seam. So I'm gonna press C2 towards C1 and D1 towards D2. And this is what's called nesting that seam because when you press them in opposite directions, they really nicely kind of sit into each other and so you can align that center seam really easily. And it really doesn't matter what the rest of the seam is doing. The rest of the seam is pressed open. I am only pressing to the side right in the center of these blocks here. That center pressing can stay and you won't even notice that it's pressed in two different directions from the front of the quilt.
So here's where you can see the progress we've made so far on this diagram. And this is from the pattern side, so the back side of the quilt. But month one was A1, A2, B1, B2. Month two is A3, A4, B3, B4. Month three is C1, C2, D1, D2. And month four that we just finished is C3, C4, D3, D4. So these four sections of the quilt will come together and then we'll have a quarter of the quilt done.